I'm trying to get a thumbnail. Hold on. You gotta get a cute thumbnail, okay? Look, I'm learning how to do this shit. My glasses all crooked. I look tired. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, this is a great, great, great night because this is something that I've been wanting to do on this album for a while as it's already March 26th and this album came out a month and a half ago on my birthday, actually. My birthday is February 10th. I'm an aqua. I'm an Aquarius. So, um, my birthday came out, I'm sorry, oh shit, <laughs> the album came out, I'm a mess, the album came out on February 10th on my birthday, and um, it's by the artist Kalila, and it's called Raven, and it's her second album since 2017 with um, her first album, Take Me Apart, um, her long-awaited second album, because she does have a really, really uh, good cult following fan base. So um, I wanted to do an album review for Raven because it's definitely an album that I've been playing ever since it came out. Um, I also tried to get into the artist Ray. I don't know what it is. Um, Ray makes like good pop music, but I don't know what it is. I'm gonna try to give Ray's album one more listen. I, I did try to listen. I'm a mess, I'm over here like. <laughs> I did try to listen to Ray's album and I played like a few songs, but I don't know. I think I also think I was having a busy day, so I forgot to listen to the rest of the album. But um, there were like a few tracks of, of Ray's uh, album. I think this is her debut album, by the way, for Ray. Let me double check before I get back to Kalila. Because um, uh, Ray's album came out a week before that. It's a pop artist named Ray. And I think this is her first official album. Yeah, because she's, she's a newer artist. And I've heard a few of Ray's songs. She got some bops. She's like a pop, pop girly. Yeah, I think this is her first official album. It's called My 21st Century Blues. I'm going to go back and listen to that album because it's, it's like pure pop. Um, yeah, Ray is like in a... In a in a different lane. Um, and I like artists who are eclectic and they just have their own sound. And I, and I also I also know that some people, we just don't like certain people's sounds. We don't like their sonic. We don't like their, their beats or VPN, whatever it's called. We don't like their sound of music. But Ray, Ray has something. I know one of her biggest singles is Escapism. That's like one of her biggest singles right now. Um, anyways, back to Kalila. So I'm excited because, um, one of my, one of my, uh, subscribers was like, oh my God, please do a Raven, um, album review. And I was like, I want to do an album review for Raven because I've been bumping this album and I really like this album. I want to talk about like some standout records to me. All of the album overall is a great album. Um, okay. So Kalila's second album, Raven came out on February 10th. It opens up with the record Washed Away. Washed Away is a beautiful intro. It's very um, smooth, it's very slow, and um, Washed Away is just more so like a good opening to Raven, right? Because for me, when I think of a raven, you think of a bird, you think of a black bird that represents like strength and darkness. You know, I think that ravens often are the birds that often kind of don't even really get talked about. They're not really like a popular bird, in my opinion. Um, as far as being an animal, right? So maybe symbolically with naming the album Raven um, and her being a black queer woman, because I, and I'm going to get to the Washed Away record, uh, Kalila is a black queer woman, right? She's, she identifies as a black femme um, specifically. And I really like that about her because I listened to her NPR podcast interview. She went to NPR and did an interview, an amazing interview on NPR. And I forgot the whole name. I'm so sorry to you, sis, but you did a great interview. Um, and I loved that interview. Oh, that interviewer was good too because she really knew Kalila. And her questions were so good. And she got Kalila to open up about her experiences being a black femme and like dealing you know, and honestly trying to um, love, like, black cis men and how that's how difficult that's been for her and, like, how that journey has been. And um, not just love, like, cis black men, but also just dealing with situationships and relationships that didn't work, but also being single, like, being lonely and being single. And, like, the, the interview was so good because the way she talked about how intricate that experience is and the way she... I don't know. Y'all go check out. I might link that NPR interview in my bio because it was such a good interview on Kalila. But I felt like I learned so much about her. And she was also stating how this album, Raven, 
because for me, let's get back to um, what she's stating because I want to talk about the bird as well, the album, you know, the metaphor of that. But she was saying how this album Raven is also dedicated to the black femme, uh, black electronic music, and black queer culture and what that looks like, you know, because she understands that she has a black um, cult following, an underground black queer cult following. So her music plays in a lot of like underground clubs, like in the New, uh, the New York scene, LA scene, like her music is like more so the underground black queer person, the black femme, you know? And that's usually, that's her biggest fan base. And you know, she was saying how she like really understands that, like sonically, you know? Um, but Raven, for me, I feel like when I think of the bird Raven, I just think about like, what I see is I see like strength. I see strength, I see darkness. I see um, a sense of, um, a sense of being on the mar on the margins to me. Like even with the album cover work, like the artwork, the the artwork is so sickening to me because it's just like dark black. I don't know if you can see it there. Yes, I use Spotify. I love Spotify. I know some of y'all girls are like, why don't you use Apple Music? I love Spotify. Although Apple Music does have <laughs> a better interface for iPhones. Sorry for my screen, I dropped it. It's the screen protector. But anyways, um, yeah, so the album, it's her, it's, I guess it's a, it's a black mask floating, floating in black water, right? And it's like submerged in water. Now, when, when she called it Raven, I'm like, okay, wouldn't we have like a bird? But I really like the concept of it because it's not too literal, right? I think that being like a black mask submerged in water, I think that's how oftentimes black femmes feel because we carry a lot of pain in this experience. You know what I mean? no matter how passable or we are or whatever, like I feel like if you're a black femme um, and existing in this world, um, like living in this country, it comes with a, it, rather you're a black woman, a black gay guy who's femme, a black trans woman, a black non-binary person. Um, I feel like albums and even the symbology of it, like the black mass floating in the water, what I'm saying, what I interpret from that is like, you know, it, it kind of speaks to, like, how we feel sometimes, like, being on the margins and a bit, like, you might just feel like you don't really, like, fit in it, or there's not always spaces for you to just be yourself, and that affects your, your love life, your family life, your work life sometimes. You might just feel like, oh, like, I just feel like I can't just be me in these spaces sometimes, and not only that, the people I love, I feel like I can't always, like, express that, or I always have to watch my back, or I have trust issues and stuff like that, so I just feel like that mask submerged in water symbolically is so powerful, right? Maybe she could be saying like, you know, let the mask go. Or maybe she's saying the mask that you're wearing as a black femme comes with a lot of pain because you're covering up a lot. So I'm gonna create the music, right, to support that, right? This music is me throwing off that mask into the water. The mask is floating in the water now. I'm letting go of that mask and now it's all in the water. It's, it's drowning now. Maybe it could be that. I'm going on a tangent, child, but that the the cover is sickening because I when I saw it I was like why does she have a mask and then I was like is it her floating in the water wearing a mask or is it just a mask by itself floating in the water you know I was just like what if it's just a mask by herself so maybe it's her just like maybe it's her saying it's an unveiling I'm taking my mask off this is my album this is all of me the mask is in the water the water is submerging it now the water is washing it away right because water water to me can symbolize can symbolize like depression darkness uh, sadness but also water and her having black water on top of that was just sickening um or darker water um it could also symbolize it being like cleared and washed away and submerged like i'm letting it go so as we talk about washed away washed away is a good opener because she only has a few lyrics on um washed away she only has a few lyrics on there and in the video it's her with her beautiful locks and she's just looking at like she's in a desert and it's like ice and she's all alone but basically some of the lyrics are wash of washed away is just far away far away the mist the light the this the that i'm sorry the mist the light the dust that settles the night um, riding out on mental rays, moving on a moving on a change of pace, and I'm far away. So basically, she's just saying how she's far away. I take it as her just saying like I'm moving on, I'm washing it all away. This is the precursor to the album as we get into the fun parts of the album. But it's it's like a slow trance that builds you up for for that big electronic feel. 
So I really like that. And it goes right into Happy Ending, which is a beautiful song, where she also opens up saying Too Far Away again. And I think she's just showing how... And I, I like I love happy ending. Because happy ending to me, I feel like she just elaborated on, like, I'm moving on. And happy ending, basically, if you really read the lyrics of the record, and I'll read a few, happy ending is just basically saying, hey, if you just allow us to really do this and really go there, we could actually have the happy ending. But you're not allowing it to happen. I take it as, like, a love um, kind of, and, and the beat sounds all, like, party and fun. And also, too, in the NPR interview and also um, on the description of the record, she was just saying, and also the description here from Genius.com, she was mentioning how this particular music video is for black queer people. And the video is just all black queer people dancing, you know, like dancing in the club and just having a ball, like just, you know, and it's like lights and it's like highlight lights and everyone's just like living their best life in the club and just being free, right? But when you listen to the words of the song and, and you actually read the lyrics of the song, it's so beautiful because not only is she saying that she's far away, she's basically just saying, we went through a lot. I know who you are. I guess she's talking to the lover in the song, which we could kind of identify as potentially a cis man. It might be a woman. Who knows? But basically, she's just saying like, I know who you are. I know your tone. Um, you know, we tried to do this, but you don't listen. Like, she's basically just saying, I'm not going to chase you, but it's not over. So it's just basically, I think she's just detailing, like, the highs and lows of, like, a situationship. And basically, what I really like about this song is that it's her calling it out, but also being confused. I feel like there's, like, a sense of confusion in this song with the lyrics, because she'll say one thing that, that sounds like positive in her lyric, and then she'll switch it up and say like, oh, but basically this is not really real, right? So I like Happy Ending because the chorus, the chorus, she basically says, we're too far away, I'm reading all the writings on the wall, and if you don't run away, could be a happy ending after all, it's deeper than fantasy. You get what I'm saying? So I think for her, what she's saying is like, what what I feel is real. What I feel is real. And it's deeper. And we can have the happy ending, you know. But we're too far away from each other. Like, I might even have you, but we're too far away. I don't know. I really like this song. I think it's really cute. And I think I think she's really playing on her lyrics and playing on her words. And it details a situation ship, in my opinion. But it's also fun. And I think it's... it's I think happy ending kind of just is kind of... Um, it's fun. It's kind of just whimsical. And it just has its own, like, energy. So happy ending is, like, one of the most popular tracks. It's one of the uh, lead singles off the album. So, um, I like the album. I'll read Happy Ending. I'll give Happy Ending like an 8 or a 9. I, like, probably like a 7. I give it a 7 because... Actually, no. I give it like an 8 because I really like the um, the instrumental to this record. Um, and the songwriting. Let's give it a 9. Let's give her a 9 on that. Because that's a really good record. Um... My favorite, I can't wait to get to my favorite. Honestly, let me take that back. I'm going to give Happy Ending like an 8 or a 7. And then Let It Go. Let It Go, I'm going to be honest, full transparency, this is one of the records that I don't really gravitate towards on the album. But I do like um, the lyrics to this particular song. Um, but also, too, I feel like Let It Go is probably one of those records that might grow on me as I listen to the album deeper. Because I already have certain favorites on the album. Like, my, my favorite, we're going to get to it, is Contact. That's my favorite, girl. I wear Contact out. I love Contact, and I loved um, Missed Call. Missed Call is my favorite. We're going to get to that. But Let It Go, I love the lyrics. And, um... I'm going to give Let It Go probably, probably like a six, honestly, because I'm going to be honest, like, I, I don't, I haven't listened to it enough, probably a five, I'll give it like a five, but I feel like Let It Go, because you know how when you listen to an album, because I listen to albums, so you know how sometimes you'll listen to an album and there's one song that you never really care for, and then like probably a year go by, or like six months go by, and then that song that you didn't really care for, it grows on you, like... Damn, I actually really like this song. I feel like Let It Go because of the messaging of it. She's singing about letting it go, like letting shit go um, or letting things go. I feel like that record, if I play it a few more times, it might 
grow on me because the chorus, the lyrics are, we're together now. It's just a stormy cloud that's nowhere bound. Um, let it go, let it go, let it go. You're ready together now, a stormy cloud. We're, no, we're nowhere bound and now it's raining. Yeah, I feel like this one might grow on me. I just haven't listened to it enough. That's why I gave it a five. Next record will be, um, oh, let's move on here. I hope y'all are enjoying this for the Kalila fans. I hope I'm doing y'all a good job because um, Take Me Apart, I actually, my actual favorite project, because Take Me Apart, I feel like I'm a late bloomer to Take Me Apart because I did listen to a few tracks on there. But I love Hallucinogen. And I also love the uh, the Bankhead project. Those two projects are like, I know Kalila for those. And also Take Me Apart remixes, right? But the Take Me Apart standard album, I feel like I'm such a latecomer because I actually started getting back into Take Me Apart because I remember when it first came out, I listened to uh, Wait In and a few, of, a few of the singles a little bit, but that first album, for some reason, I kind of like skipped over it and I went immediately to... The other projects, which is like, I think Hallucinogen came out before. But, um, but yeah. Next track is On The Run. I'm all over the place. Y'all have your following. Look, it's late, okay? On The Run, <laughs> which is one of the most popular records. This is like the first single that introduced us to the Raven album, the Raven project. And, um, On The Run is very, um, to me, it's very eclectic. It's very soft. It has a little bit of an R&B energy to it, although it's technically... It's technically electronic. I also consider On The Run sort of like a, um, a R&B alternative sound. It's, it's very, like, left. You know, because I feel like artists like Khalila and Solange, um, a lot of people don't appreciate them because they're very, um, they're very off-the-grid artists to me. Like, their sound, right? Their, their lyrics, their harmonies, the choices that they choose for, for the sound of their projects, their production of their projects. It's beautiful music, but... Um, I feel like a lot of people don't really appreciate artists like Halila because it's not the conventional radio sound, you know, and she's electronic and, you know, she's just different. And I call that like an off the grid artist. Like, it's like there are artists who's like well respected, but they're just off the grid. Kind of like a Sade, but Sade is like more jazz. But anyways, I'm all over the place. Okay. On the run. I like on the run. Um, I don't like it as much as Happy Ending. Actually, no, I do like I do like On the Run as much as Happy Ending. I do like On the Run as as much as Happy Ending. I'm gonna give On the Run. I'm gonna give On the Run a solid eight. I'm gonna give it like a solid eight or a seven. Actually, no, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give On the Run an eight because basically she's singing about opening up. She's singing about opening up. She's basically basically calling someone out for being on the run and you really wanting someone, but they're running away and you know why they're running away. And I just think that it details the complexities of a intimate relationship, right? Um, an intimate connection. And just basically, like, someone's on the run. Like, we're on the run. Like, you know what I mean? And it's interesting because being a black femme, I feel like in this experience across the spectrum, whenever we like date and stuff like that, it's just, it's like, let's compare it to that. Let's, let's, let's look at on the run through the lens of a black femme. Like a lot of these experiences of like dating or friendships or just like family stuff, I feel like, especially with dating in particular, we're used to kind of like having people run away because it's like you could really be vibing with somebody but it's like they just don't see it for you in the same way and then you know we live in a world that like a lot of colorism ex a lot of colorism exists with you know being a black femme being a black woman especially um with dating and stuff like that a lot of colorism exists a lot of featurism exists with trying to date um and, not, and it's not even just about beauty standards as well, which is, like, one major, major topic. But also, too, some people are just not ready, right? And I think that being a black femme, you might meet a person who you're really, really into, but that person is just not ready for a commitment or to be in a solid, like, declared relationship. I mean, we see that all the time, even with cis women. Like, it's so difficult if you, you know, want, want the black love. You know, it's really hard. I just feel like... It's hard. So On The Run is good. I'm over here going on a rant. Let's move on. On The Run is a solid record, and I think it's a good single. One of my favorites is Missed Call. This is a track, and I really... When Missed Call came on, for some reason, I really related to Missed Call. I was like, this is where I'm at in my life right now. Like, I love Missed Call. 
But Miss Call is number five. And I love it. Like, immediately when it opens up, it's very fast. Because I feel like, low-key, the first few songs, I was waiting for the album to pick up. Because I was like, I know that we're electronic, but her instrumentals are not, to me, are not... They are electronic, and I, and honestly, I'm still getting more familiar with um, the electronic genre. But I also feel like Halila is very like alternative R and B as well. It's not just like pure electronic, because most electronic is like very like mm, it's like very fast paced, very you know. So I was also looking for that energy, and it came with Missed Call. Like Missed Call is a very light hearted way of just saying, "Look, I don't need you anymore. We've been playing all these games." And now I'm not answering your calls, right? The verse, the first verse is gone away, gone away all the days when I needed someone around. Far away, far away, yes, far away, but now. Pre-chorus, I'm in a dream, I wake up, and so the moment that we make up, run away, run away when I lose control, get a hold, you're emotional. Chorus, might be the time to make that call, start to text, I hit a road. Do I want to fall in love again? And I don't know, but I just might. Go ahead and take a bite. The nerve is leading up to tonight, baby. Yes. I love it. I love Miss Call. Miss Call. But it's funny because um, not only in a romantic thing or or in a romantic lens, I, 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 I saw this song as basically... I saw this song. I feel like this song could be applied to like all relationships. You know, because she's telling how it's like, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the song because I'm all over the place. Hold on. I feel like maybe I'm misunderstanding. But what I'm trying to say is I feel like I feel like she's like just basically saying like gone away are the days that I really, really needed this said person. But I'm still going to detail the struggles that I have in private a little bit. Right. Because some of her lyrics. Um, she's she's basically saying, like, I might make that phone call, right? But essentially, if you call me, it's a missed call because I, I can't do this anymore. I'm strong. Like, at least that's how I took it. But let me read the verse, child, because the song sounds so damn good. Okay, verse two is float away, float away on a river into the sound. All the way, all the way through my body gets in the clouds. Cool. That's what I take it about. That's I mean, that's what I take this song as. The chorus uh, might be the time to make that call. Starts the text, I hit a wall. Do I still want to fall in love again? Or do I want to fall in love again? And I don't know, but I just might. Go ahead and take a bite. This song just details the constant struggle, right? But also to the missed call, the missed opportunity. I think that also, too, when you're dealing with, like, situationships and, like, complications in relationships... It's real. And I, that's why I really like her songwriting on this record, too, because it's real because she's basically saying, like, I don't really need you. I'm strong, but I'm still having those moments where I'm like, oh, I might make the call. I might do it, but I'm not going to do it. And every time I try to do it, I, I block myself and I hit a wall. So this is a missed call. Right. It could also be taken as someone wanting to call her and she's ignoring their calls. Because maybe maybe she's saying, like, you know, I want to respond to you, but also, too, I hit a wall with the chorus, you know. I just feel like she's detailing, she's always detailing, like, the complications of a, of a particular, like, connection, right? A connection that's complicated. I like Miss Call. I hope y'all like that breakdown, because it was a bit all over the place, child. But I really, Miss Call is one of my favorite songs. I give it a 10. Um, and also her songwriting, I like how she plays with the complications of relationships. Because in situationships and relationships, it's very confusing sometimes. So her lyrics, I like how she purposely writes about that confusion, like the way that she writes. Like she'll say, like, gone away, gone away where I don't really need you. And then she'll be like, okay, but I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about you and I might call and I might respond. And I, you know what I mean? So it, it just details the thoughts that goes on in someone's head as they're dealing with a situation. Because I've been there, y'all. I've been, Look, I've had, I've had times where you really feel in someone or something like that. And it's complicated. So you're just like, you, you're like in private, you're like fighting with yourself. Like, oh, like I want to text him, but... Oh, like, I don't need him. I'm strong. Like, I like it. I really like this record. Next is Closure. One of my, oh, now Closure, Closure. 
I felt it gave me a little Janet Jackson moment to me because she was very, very sexual in the song. I don't know. I, I really liked Closure because when I first heard Closure, I thought like, oh, it's probably like a sad song about Closure. No, but it was one day when it was raining here in March in LA, right? It was raining or whatever. And I was driving around early in the morning and I was bumping Closure. And I was all like, wait, hold on. Let me like really examine this record. Basically this song, and I give it a 10. Basically, she's saying, look, I want to see you so we can do the do. I need that closure. Does that make sense? So you know how when you're in a complicated relationship or situationship, them urges be hitting you, you know, and, and sometimes you just got to go and handle it. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, okay? I'm, I'm trying to be PG. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, it's such a sensual, sexy record. The way that she sings, the way that she sings, um, not the verse, it's the, um, It's the pre-chorus for me. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me slow down because I really like this song. This this my shit. I like this song. This song is lit. Okay. So, she opens up the song. It sounds very magical, very like, very like magical, very icy, very cold. Um, the instrumental is fire for this song, by the way. Verse one is throw it on the flame, ignite it. If we link up, you won't want to go. Put the sword down, you can't fight it. If, if you front row, I'll put on a show. You try to postpone one night. Guess I wasn't clear enough. It's a body party. You're invited. You faking, but I'm ready. I was like, Kalila. I was like, sis. I was like, because, like, you know, look, we all been there. I've had situations where I was just like, you know, you playing with me, and I feel like I'm not being clear. Okay. I'm not trying to get too PG on here. I mean, too rated R, sorry. But, you know, I've had, we, we it's a relatable song. Y'all can't act like y'all have never been in a situation or someone you're dating where you're just like, you're trying to be clear with the person, but they're not picking up. You saying like, look, I, I want a new marriage. You know, and they won't pick it up. So she's like, look, do I need to be more clear? The pre-chorus, I, I love it. It's, this song is so bomb to me. It's so sensual. She put, um, give up, then I'll forgive you. For taking me to, for sorry, give up then I'll forgive you for talking to me dirty earlier. What do I get for you ghosting? Love. Just come through. I'll forget it. Talk to me. I'm feeling wavy. Back and forth and so it goes. I was like, because catch that. She basically said, look, you be ghosting me. You be playing games. So why don't you just come and like. You know, you be talking to me dirty. Like, it's a really freaky song. I was like, Halila. Talking about talking to me dirty earlier. What do I get for you ghost in love? I'm like, ooh. Did y'all catch that? She, she talking her shit on the song. You like that. Main chorus is, is that all you got? And did you really cop out when you know you want a top? And so I'm following on the low. Is that all you got? I'm talking a lot because I'm sure you should stop bugging. We got some things to explore. Really, really sexy song. <laughs> talking about a complicated situation. I think she's also talking about the physical piece of it. Like, look, once we get it, I'm gonna get the closure that I need. That's also how I took this song. Next was Contact, I give it a 10. One of my favorite songs on the album. Video getting kind of long, y'all. I'm sorry, we got 30 minutes now. But play this in the background while you're doing laundry and stuff, because I'm not editing, girl. <laughs> but, um, and this is for true Khalila fans, and I hope that I'm doing y'all justice, because I am a fan too, but I feel like I'm like, I'm really like digging into, I'm really, really, really sorry. I'm sorry, I'm all, ugh, I'm all over the place. But I'm learning how to really understand Khalila on a deeper level. Um, and dig into her more with this particular album. So, um, because I kind of fell off would Take Me Apart a little bit. But I love the remix. So it's like with this album, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm getting back on. Because I love uh, Bankhead. Bankhead is my, my, my jam. 
Contact is one of my favorite songs on the album. I love the video. I love how simple the video is. I love how she's walking around in her apartment with her dress on with her glass of wine, with her friend like dancing in her bedroom. I just love it because it's such an intimate video. And, you know, all music videos don't need, like, this elaborate budget and stuff like that. I feel like sometimes when when artists make music, people are always looking for, like, a mainstream, like, I need a budget. I need this. I love how Khalila was like, look, we're going to get in this apartment, girl. I'm going to throw on my dress and dance in the bathroom and have my glass of wine and chill with my homegirl and, like, open up the curtains. She was just, like, living her life in her house. I love, I love, I like the video. I really like it. So Contact, um, mm, I think she's talking about smoking weed on this song. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing real Khalila fans a disservice, y'all. But I really like it. I take it as a chill song. Let's read, let's read the, um, the verse one. We're taking a ride, 405 through the west side. We're party to party. It's late, but we're wide awake. The base of my body, I'm sinking it so wide. Time is a row, now I'm floating in outer space. Okay. Yes, Khalila. Um, pre-chorus, rolling up, we bring in the light. It might just render you blind. We're working hard every day. Don't need your help. I can pay. You stressing, that's not allowed. There's nothing holding us down. You see my hips and they sway. Now you see me walking away to the dance floor. I really like this song. It's a fun, I feel like Contact is such a fun, even when the beat opens, it's very fast paced. It's very like this true, true electronic you know, it puts you in a trance. Main chorus. Oh, it's Asana. Here if you want to. Oh, and I, okay. She'd be like, oh, it's Asana. Here when I want to. I love it. I love it. It's 2 a.m. Yeah, we made it. Everybody faded. And now I'm floating away, far away, far away. You're trying to stall and delay, but I want to play. I like this record. And I think it's called Contact because she's talking about smoking a blunt, okay? But but it's also a fun song of like, I'm making contact with my peoples, but I'm also, I'm just having fun. Like a contact high as well, singing about floating and being high, child, being higher than a kite, but just having a fun time with your friends. You know what I mean? So I, I take it as, it's like a metaphor for getting, smoking that tree. But also, you know, having fun and letting go and just celebrating all night. Like, one of those fun nights where you're just able to be free. I really like... Contact is one of my favorite records. I really, really like it. It puts you in a whole trance. Fully. I'm going to be honest. Fully. I like the transition to Fully. Is Fully my favorite song? Mm, not my favorite song on the album. I don't think it's a bad song. I feel like I just don't listen to it enough. I always press skip on Fully. Um, I tried to listen to it a few times. And I was like, I, I don't know why I can't get into Fully. I just could not get into it. I couldn't get into Fully. But let's read some of the lyrics. Far away from submerged sound. Far away from submerged sound. Yeah, Fully to me is like a, a, a interlude. Like Fully is not even like a full record. But she's saying far away from submerged sound far away from submerged sound and she gives you a lot of vocals now fully is beautiful because of the vocal runs right i have, I have like fully has a lot a lot of beautiful runs and it's just her giving you pure vocals so i just think fully is just like a strong interlude but i'm i'm not gonna lie i do skip it a lot i do skip it a lot I'm going to give Fully, like, a... For creativity and vocals, I'm going to give it an 8 for an interlude. But I do skip it a lot. So, I don't come back to it a lot. But I feel like Raven is one of those albums, kind of like Renaissance, with his transitions and stuff. He used to listen to it all as one project, all as one album, right? Because a lot of her songs transition into each other. And by the way, I'm not comparing her to Beyonce. Khalila has always been a... Been a um, or an electronic artist, okay? So I'm not trying to say Renaissance is lower than Raven or Raven is better. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that both of both of those albums have uh, good transitions, right? And I love how Contact trans transitions into Fully. I really, really like that, that smooth transition in the vocals. I'm going to give it an eight for the vocals and the transition. Nine is Holier. Now, Holier... I like the title of Holier. Verse one, and though we struggle apart, thought I was good, but I'm not. 
and though it troubles my heart, don't want to cover the scar. So I, I go where they hold me down, and I go where they hold me down, and you're not going to take my crown, and I'm trying, but this time around. I'm afloat. Yeah, I'm floating away, sitting around, and I found out it ain't about no weight. I don't care what you're talking about. All that you say, you won't learn anyway. Because I'd rather be holier, and I'd rather be holier. Because I'd rather be holier, because I'd rather be holier. This song, she's, she's calling someone out, and I think what she's saying is like, look... You're giving me a hard time, but you're not going to get me down. I'm picking and choosing my battles because I'm trying to really elevate and go higher. So you're testing me. You're testing me. You're testing me. But I'm going to float away because I want to be holier. <laughs> I think what she's saying is like, look, like we could really go. We could really, really go there. But I'm trying to really, you're trying to shake me up a little bit. This world is getting to me. Because that, that could be, she could be singing about a conflict with a person or a conflict in the workplace or a conflict in day-to-day -day life being a black femme and how you feel. Because there are times where I'm in spaces and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let you have that one. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to pick and choose my battles because you tried me. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's not even just a race thing. Sometimes it can be other black femmes who are giving you a hard time, like an intra-community issue. You know what I mean? It could be that. Right? It could be it could be a cis person giving a trans person an issue where both of y'all are black and it's like, okay, look, I really I, I really I just wanna be holier. I'm not trying to go there. <laughs> you know, I don't care what you're saying. I'm not gonna let you get me down. I like the messaging. Holier is also kinda like an interlude, it's really short. Let's give holier I like the message of it. I'm gonna give holier a ten. I like the message of it. And I like the sound of holier as well. It's kind of like a play on that, a metaphor. Raven, the lead track. Now, Raven opens up super, 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 super slow for about two minutes. And then out of nowhere towards the end, it gets super, super action-packed. It gets super... That's where that true electronic comes in. So the Raven... Raven is um, the lead... That's the, the title of the album as well. But Raven wasn't a single. Let's get into Raven, because honestly, um, Raven is one of my favorite tracks. I'm going to rate Raven as like a, a seven, honestly, um, because I feel like I'm, I'm, Raven is also so growing on me because I love Contact. Contact is my G. Every time I open up this album, I, I immediately go to Missed Call, Closure, Contact, um, Bruises, and then I go to Raven. And then I go to Holier. And then I go to the last track. Cause I love the I love the way the album closes. So oftentimes when I listen to the when I listen to this album, I just kinda like bounce around and like always go to like one track and I stay there and then I go to this one and then I come back. But um Raven, I love the end of it. I love how action packed it is. Um, I feel like in this record she's singing about challenges. I feel like she's singing about being challenged. <laughs> Verse 1, through all the labor a raven is born. They try to break her. There's nothing here to mourn, to mourn, to mourn, to mourn. Verse 2, to all my labor, don't tell me that I'm strong. You'll never wake up. Your silence lasts so long. Verse 3, oh, sorry. Verse 3, I had a lot of water. Sorry, I'm over here burping. Verse 3, oh, and by the way, raven doesn't have a chorus, by the way. She just gave you verse one, verse two, verse three. Verse three, the hype will waver. I'm not nobody's pawn. Don't need no favors. It's all good. I've moved on, moved on, moved on. Pre-chorus, over the line, over the line, going in tonight. But it feels right. And I think that's when the record speeds up. Chorus, as I separate, closer to what I need tonight. No other way. Starting to feel my body now. I separate, closer to what I need tonight. No other way. I can feel my body now. I can feel my body now. I can feel my body now. Closer to what I need tonight. I like Raven. I really, really, really like Raven. Um, let me read Genius, because I'm, I'm, I'm reading the lyrics off of Genius. So when she opens up verse one, because I really want to understand Raven a little bit deeper. Because not only to me, because I, I take it as like she's singing about a challenge to me, like being challenged. That's how I took it. 
But as I'm getting deeper into the lyrics, she's singing about labor. And I, and, I, and honestly, I think this speaks to how what we've seen recently back in like 2020 and just with the whole like people acknowledging how bad they've treated black people in this country, right? You remember, y'all remember in 2020 how there was like this period of people being really sad <laughs> about like, for example, Breonna Taylor and, um, you know, um, the situation that happened with, um, oh Lord, it was a lot of situations that happened in 2020, child. The situation that happened with George Floyd and just all these situations and all that, they were all erupted by the issues that are happening with blackness in this country, right? So people were very, very apologetic at that time. I remember white people were feeling so guilty. Um, companies were feeling guilty. <laughs> and it was just like this uproar of anger, where I feel like there was like a shattering at that time period. So when we talk about labor, it, it, it that also was a thing where I felt like people were guilty. And, and I felt like people who were oppressive towards black people, especially white people, but even other races, they also felt, some of them who actually cared about like black issues and things like that, there was, there was this energy of like, let me thank you for my labor. I'm so sorry for all I've done to you. Oh, you're black, so I know your experience is harder than mine, so I feel sorry for you. So I think for her, she's saying like, you know, yeah, I do the labor, but like, don't thank me for that. Like, just leave me alone. Like, y'all are really trying to break me down, but I'm reborn by this. And for me, I'm leaving my body. So for me, for me it's about being in this body and the trauma that comes with being in this body and what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But me being a raven, I'm reborn and I, and I can feel my body. For me, it's about it's about me not just dis disassociating from myself with the trauma of my blackness and also being femme and what and, and what comes with that through my life experiences through through that intersection that intersectionality. I'm all over the place, I'm tired child. But I take it as her just saying, look, when I go home at night, I want to feel, I want to, I just got to get back to me and feel my body, right? So don't thank me for the pain. Don't thank me for the labor. None of that. And then it transitions into bruises. I give Raven a solid seven. It transitions into bruises. And by the Raven, Raven is not a horrible song. I give it a seven because I wanted more of the action packed uh, transition of that song I felt like it was so long To get to like the fast paced part But I also understand That Kalila probably did that On purpose of course because it's her album And whoever produced it right um, Let me not say whoever my bad oh, I wonder actually Who produced Raven Because I really like that song But I really love Um I love when it like switches up. I feel like when I hear that that instrumental, I feel like I'm in like a Laura Croft like video game, like Tomb Raider or something like that. I really like. Yeah, someone in the comments on GS they put when that beat came in, I was whopping it up. It, it is like I love when the beat transitions because she it just really went there. It's produced by Asma Maruf, Ace Mo, Fajia, and Kalila. Oh, fabulous. I don't even know these producers, child. They're probably some European producers, something like that, child. Some fabulous, eclectic producers. I love Raven. Actually, let's give Raven like a nine. Raven has a strong record. I'm being too hard on it. I feel like I'm being too hard on it. Uh, bruises. <laughs> bruises. I love the messaging of bruises. Um, let's read a little bit of the lyrics. Verse one, push me when I'm down. I'm leaving, but you hound me. Nothing more to say. You can find another way. No, I don't want to do another round. You don't know, but you're loud. Chorus, find another way, find another way, find another way, find another way. I love bruises. I love bruises because it's very intense as well. And when I listen to this record, even without the lyrics, I think what she's saying is like, oh, like, you're trying to test me again find another way because I have a lot of bruises, right? I have a lot of bruises. You're, you're hitting me. You're hurting me. But I got to find another way. And even the instrumental, it's so challenging. It feel like you could feel the conflict in this song. Like when I listen to it, I feel like I feel conflicted. And it makes me think about what I'm thinking about in my life sometimes where I feel like 
oh, I'm being so challenged, but I have to find another way. Because I feel, this relates to being a black femme all day long, because I feel like living this part of this life and through our experiences, we often feel so blocked by trying to exist in all these spaces that we have to navigate sometimes. Um, even outside of spaces that put us out of our comfort zone. Um, you know, we might deal with politics and stuff like that. We, I feel like just being a black femme sometimes, you might deal with situations where you feel blocked, right? And it could be, it, it, and it's not just like workplace politics. It's not just that. It could be institutionalized racism. It could be navigating healthcare structures, child. There's just different ways where if you are a black femme person, um, specifically, you're put in positions where it's like, okay, I have to find another way. I just gotta find another way. I really like this song. And I think it alludes to the bruises that you have in your life. I think that's why she's titled it Bruises. Because have y'all ever felt so beat up sometimes? And when you're navigating, it's like, damn, I'm really bruised up. When I'm trying to deal with day-to-day -day life, a bitch is tired, you know? Uh, verse two, you wait for the encore, wait till it breaks with the, with the something to change. I can't relate, boy. But I changed my fate and my girl did the same. And we came to destroy. You're feeling so next, but it's sad because you're late. You're not going to take more. Chorus. Find another way, find another way. Oh, step it up a little, baby. Find another way, step it up a little, baby. Verse three, a pause. Now you're thinking that everything's fine, but you know it's a lie. A part, but you're sinking. You're watching me work. You don't even try. You think you're escaping. Excuse for the pain, but we all feel the same. You're mad, but I'm saying find another way. I like that. She plays with words a lot. She plays a lot with her words. You know how when some songwriters, they play? And that's why I love songwriting, because songwriting, I like artists who are not that um, easy with their pen, right? Um, but, but here's the thing. When it comes to songwriting, sometimes when you're super easy with the pen and super literal with your songwriting abilities and your writing, I feel like some artists, they're stronger with that. But I also love the artists who are complicated with their lyrics. Because it's like, wait, what are you trying to say, girl? Because you could take what they're saying and apply it to so many situations. Sorbet. I love sorbet. Sorbet is sexy. I like sorbet. Now, the meaning of sorbet, let's get into it. But I, I really, sorbet gets a 10 for me. I, I really, really like sorbet. One of my favorites on the album. I forgot about it, y'all. But one of my favorites on the album. Verse one, waves when we touch, ripping in, soft on my mouth, sweeter than I want to lay out, sun on my face, need all of your love right now, don't want to wait. Chorus, start with my hand on your skin, only, only a touch and we get into it. We start where to begin. No need to rush, it never ends, it never ends. I like sorbet. Sorbet is sexy. We know what she's talking about. I get it. I give it a ten out of ten. It's a long ass video, child. We have forty seven. I gotta wrap this up. Um, divorce, full transparency. Divorce is still growing on me. I'm gonna give divorce because it didn't catch me initially. I consider the interlude. I'm giving divorce like probably like a five or a six because I also feel that I need to sit and listen to the interlude interludes a lot more. I always uh, skip divorce. No shade. So, but but I feel like divorce, I need to really sit with that because um, the other record that I gave a strong rating for um, was Fully. I think I fully, I like the vocals of Fully and I gave it an eight. So divorce may be able to grow on me because I always skip divorce. Enough for Love, I actually like Enough for Love. Enough for Love is a grower, not a shower on the album. It's beautiful, beautiful music video. I feel like I need to study Enough for Love more. Sorry to my true Raven Cole following. I feel like I'm letting y'all down. But I really, really do like this album. And I do like Enough for No Love. I'm going to give Enough for No Love like a... Mm, from what I've heard, I'm going to give Enough for Love an 8 on the album. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Chorus. Because you forgot about us, you're not alone, not alone. Are you tough enough for love? Give it up. You forgot about us, you're not alone, not alone. 
Are you tough enough for love? I need a tougher love. Um, let me actually give it like an eight. Because her songwriting is so good. And I also like the sound of Enough for Love. Um, verse one, stop so we could talk about it. Tell me what's going on with you, baby. Let's go. Even though you doubt it. Sorry, let go. Even though you doubt it. Tell me, are you keeping up with your wounds? Can you love through it, baby? Pre-chorus, I don't really... I don't really know why you walk away. Never really know what you got to say. Are you even there if you're half the way? And I don't really know why we escalate. And I don't really know why you're testing me. Yeah, you come around, but you never stay. Chorus, because you forgot about us, but you're not alone, not alone. Are you tough enough for love? Give it up. But you forgot about us. No, you're not alone, not alone. Enough for love. Ooh, enough for love is actually good with the lyrics. Let's give let's 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 give it a nine. Enough for love. Let's give it a nine. Far away, great closer. I think she's just repeating how far away she is. And when and honestly, she repeats. If you notice throughout the album, through multiple songs, she always talks about floating away, being far away. I want to get away. I think that's why the album is titled Raven. Because, like, the metaphor of it as well, when you think about a bird, a dark bird, a dark, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bird that's often not talked about, right? But they're there. Like, ravens are there, but they're often not talked about. To me, that's the Black Femme experience, hands down. She's genius for that album title, by the way. Because I feel like the messaging of that is kind of like, and when you think about being far away, far away, far away, and wanting to float away, I just think a lot of us can really relate to that when we deal with our pain and our experience. I feel like with what we go through in the world on a day-to-day -day, on a day-to-day -day basis, and if you don't have a lot of support, and even if you do have a lot of support, when you're dealing with your relationships and trying to just move in these different spaces throughout life, um, it gets to you sometimes. And, and I don't know, I, I just really like how she's constantly reiterating, floating away, being far away, being in touch with your body, but wanting to get away. Anyways, that's my review. It was long. <laughs> it's super, super long. But I hope, I hope the true Kalila fans understood what I was trying to get at, y'all. Anyways, it was a long video. I'm so sorry. It's 52 minutes. But... Play it when you're doing laundry. Play it when you're bored, honey. I know it's long as hell. I might not get no views on this. But anyways, I tried to give y'all a strong review of Raven. And um, there are a few records that I feel like I need to get deeper into. Full transparency. So I hope you enjoyed. All right. We are out. If you liked it, comment, drop down. Let me know what your favorite was. This was a super, super long video. I might do it over. I don't know, child. I'm sleepy as hell. But <laughs> thank y'all for watching anyway. Take care. Thank you.